the more I learn about the different things about live streaming, the different devices like the ATM Mini and all of that, the more I am stunned at how much is actually possible with all kinds of different solutions. Now, one main thing that I always thought that was kind of lacking inside of OBS specifically is the ability to have something on screen even when you are switching between scenes. And the only really good solution that I found up until this point was to actually just simply add the thing to every single scene. So for example, if I had a lower third that I constructed here, a kind of like a best solution case is you can just take these two things, copy them over, and now you have it in this scene right there, but then you don't have it when you are here, so you have to copy it into this scene as well. So then it actually sticks around. This, of course, for example, being a logo that you want to have on screen all the time when you are live streaming, or even your alerts, for example, for donations and stuff like that, those also would have to go onto every single scene. Now, this, of course, is not really a good solution. So let's just remove those from those two th scenes and have a different solution. And that would have been also a interesting solution. And to me, that was to add a meta source or basically a meta scene to add all of those things to. So let's say I wanna have this meta scene. So we can actually go in here now and go into this one. We wanna have a scene. And in this case, we wanna have the lower third. And I wanna add another scene. And this is not gonna show anything, but let's imagine those are your um, alerts, for example, inside of this scene. So now you have this meta scene and you have those two things active in there. And now what you can go in here is you actually add another scene to this one, which now is the meta scene. And you put this on top of everything so that it is a overlay on top of all of those things. But now again, you would have to copy this over to this other scene so that you have everything there. So let's copy this one, copy that over to the second camera and paste this in. So now we have the meta scene right here as well. And if you automate things with certain shortcuts, you could actually make this invisible essentially by doing it invisible or making it invisible right here. If you don't wanna mess around with those shortcuts, you could also use studio mode. And then basically you have this active on screen and you can go into the meta scene and now disable, for example, this lower third. However, that of course will immediately take it out of the on screen or live program because it is removed inside of this source or inside of this scene and that automatically also does not show it anymore inside of this nested scene. Now, that was a okay solution, I would say, but also not the best, and especially not considering things like, for example, the ATM Mini, which has a feature that is called a downstream keyer. Now, I have set up something here, which I have a little bit of a lower third graphic in the media pool of my ATM Mini, and if I go into the settings on the right-hand side here, we have the downstream keyer, and I have the media player one and media player one key active. That is necessary to make it transparent, and this, of course, is a PNG file, which you have to have for transparency and all of that. And here, those two things are set up. We have a duration in terms of how long it should take for this to fade in and fade out. And now if I hit the auto button right here, the lower third actually shows up on screen. And now if I don't have this tied to the transition, this actually stays on screen no matter what I do. So if I change here, it is there. If I change here, it is there. If I change to here, it is there and so on. And now to make this disappear again, I can go back into the application and I basically just click the on air. This would just toggle it on and off, so no transition there, or I could hit the auto button, then it disappears like so. So this is what I am used to or now used to, and I found a solution that does something very similar inside of OBS so you can use open broadcaster software completely for free 
on your computer to do things that usually only hardware was able to do. I think some programs might be giving you solutions for this Ecamm Live as far as I know as well. However, that of course is not a free program, so it's kind of an unfair comparison. Now, what you wanna do to get this working, of course, is go to a website. And first and foremost, I wanna shout out ExcelDRO because he is once again the person that actually makes this possible by having developed a plugin called Downstream Keyer. And this is once more one of those plugins where I think this should become hands down part of OBS because it is just ingenious and totally makes things possible that just weren't possible before. Now, once more, this is available for Windows, Mac OS, and Linux, and you can download it by simply hitting the download button and then getting whatever file you need. Now, for me, it would be the PKG file. So download that, unzip it by opening it up, and then we wanna go into the downloads folder. And with that here, we can simply go either double click it, and if that doesn't work, you can right click, open it up, and go through the installation process. I of course have this already installed, can remove this, and of course also close my browser. Now with this plugin installed, you might not notice anything different at the start, and that is because you actually have to activate the dock first. Now I have my usual setup locked, so now I have to unlock it by right clicking or control clicking into the area or any area that is like this header of one of those docks. And then we have the downstream keyer available right here. And I can now activate this and have this right here. And then I can lock my other things again. Now what we have here, and usually this would be empty because nothing is set up, is a one downstream keyer. And you actually have the ability to have multiple downstream keyers with this plugin, which makes it even more powerful. So now what we wanna do to have something available on all of the scenes is first and foremost, remove our meta scene right here from the scenes. So now we have this no more. We can also remove the complete scene for the whole meta thing. And now to add a scene to the downstream keyer, we have to open the scene up and with that, click the plus icon. And now this is basically linked to this downstream keyer. And now I can go in here and be on my main scene. And then I can actually say, what part of this downstream keyer do I want to enable? And let's say I wanna have the lower third. I can simply just click the lower third like so. And now this actually shows up on the screen and I can switch to another scene and see, it's still there. And that is because this is essentially applied after the whole scene is rendered. So you have the scene that you're on, which is rendered, and then on top of that, you have the downstream keyer, and that is how this is essentially also done. Now, if you wanna get something off of the screen, you would then go in here and select the part because you apparently cannot unselect something. You actually have to pause this here, and so it actually is removed. Another thing here is you can actually change the transition. So you have different transitions available depending on what kind of transitions you have set up in your system. I have cut and fade. So if I make it a cut and I click on this, then it is a cut. Now, if I change this to fade, then I want to pause this. It fades out in 300 milliseconds. Now, once more, you can do this with multiple things. So let's say I have another scene, which let's call this meta logo and right here we want to load some kind of a image graphic let's say we have a image and let's say i have this little robot right here and i want to have this as my kind of like a tv situation logo at the top let's make it not quite as focused on the corner and with that we have our logo not showing up right because it is not set up as a downstream keyer now if i select the so uh, the scene add this to the downstream keyer one, and now I go in here and activate one of the sources, the logo appears when I select it, and the lower third appears when I select it. And as you see, this actually switches between these two as you change between the different things that this downstream keyer is. So right now, 
this is basically just overlaying one of these on top of this thing. Now, however, what if we want to have the logo on screen all the time, no questions asked? And that, of course, can be done by adding another downstream gear. So we can go onto the gear icon right there, click the Add button, and let's call this DSK2. And with that, we have another downstream gear. Switch to our scene that we want to have inside of this downstream gear, add it with the plus icon, and now we can actually remove it from here. So now we have this lower third showing up, and we have the logo because we are still on the meta logo scene. But if I switch back to the main scene, now we have the lower third active, and I can pause this by doing the pause button on this downstream gear and switch to the second downstream gear and click the logo, and now that is overlaid on top of those things. Now, if I go back to the downstream gear one, activate the lower third, and voila, you can see we have all of those things active, and if I switch to another camera perspective, you can see both of those things are still active. And now, if I disable the lower third, for example, that goes away, and we have the logo still showing on the top left corner. Now that's how the downstream keyer plugin works. And as I've mentioned before, I think this totally should become part of OBS. It is an incredibly powerful feature and dearly missed in past years to have something on screen at all times. One of those things, again, that I think this is incredibly useful for are those things like, for example, your donation alerts and stuff like that. You can now have a scene that includes those donation uh, alerts and you have a downstream keyer, which makes it so that that is actually put onto everything that you are doing. So that's one of the obvious use cases. Another one being the lower thirds, for example, because you could have multiple lower thirds set up right here and then simply switch between them by having this one right here. And for demonstration purposes, let's say we want to duplicate this scene. So the lower third two. And there we want to have a different text in it. So I have to remove this because text elements are usually also um, referenced. So let's have a second text element testing. And if I save that, put this into the box because we have to stop this downstream key here. We have to put this into its little box right there. And let's make it like this add it to this downstream keyer. And now imagine you have two guests on your show and you want to have different lower thirds showing up at certain times, or you have different kinds of news bumpers or stuff like that. You can simply just click on these and you can switch between them, move them out of the way and have them appear again. And all of that done on top of everything. So if I switch to this, switch cameras, it's still there. And that is incredibly helpful. Now you can of course also have hotkeys attached to these, but that's not something that I'm going to talk about in this video. You can however have that to switch between things, disable downstream keyers and all of that. So that's also a possibility. Now if you want to change the text inside of a lower third that is currently off screen, because if it's on screen it is going to be changed immediately, you then would have to change to studio mode change to your meta scene essentially that includes that lower third. So right now we are showing the testing one. If I now go in the lower third one, which is currently not on screen, and I, for example, change this text to lower third, and now actually want to enable this on the screen, and then the text is actually accurately displayed right there. So that is something to keep in mind. But again, if you have the lower third currently active, which is the one that is currently on the screen, you edit this text, it is immediately showing up on screen. So you might want to just pause the downstream here, do your edits, and then activate it again on screen so that there is nothing going on live as you have this already on the screen. But you have the possibility with studio mode to change the text while you have something edited or ready to go for the next downstream keyer and dynamically change what you show 
in those little boxes. Or if you have images or video files playing or stuff like that, that of course is also a possibility. Now I'm really looking forward to hear what you have to say about this in the comment section down below or on my Discord server. I hope this video was helpful or informative in some kind of way. If it was, I would appreciate a thumbs up. That always helps out a lot. I am constantly stunned at what is possible with this completely open source and free program and with the extensions and plugins that people develop for it. And with that, you might find more videos interesting that are going to be linked here at the end of the video. And with all that said, I hope you have an amazing day, make it your life and your streams better with a downstream keyer, and I will see you in the next video. Ciao, ciao.